Thank you, uh, Chairman Rogers, and to the ranking member uh, for holding this important hearing. Um, General Richardson, it is uh, good to see you again. Um, last year, I was in Trinidad and Tobago attending the CARICOM uh, Heads of Government Conference. Uh, during that trip and in meetings afterward, I've had uh, several conversations with regional partners uh, discussing how the United States and the Caribbean must work together to address challenges in the region. Uh, today's resignation of Prime Minister Henry of Haiti as a result of increased gang violence really further highlights the fact that regional security, economic growth, and addressing the climate crisis, as well as energy resiliency, are all imperative to the success of the region. So, General, um, how do you believe that the United States uh, would work with Caribbean nations to address these shared issues and to create long lasting partnerships in order to show an alternative to China's influence in the region. Yes, yeah, so the, uh, thank you, Congressman. And the, uh, the work that we do with the Caribbean is extremely important because of, uh, obviously, how close the Caribbean is to our, our homeland. And so the security cooperation, the exercises, the regional conference uh, that I do to bring leaders together, uh, but not just talk about things, actually uh, have deliverable, deliverables on getting after those challenges that we identify during the conferences um, is, is what we have really put emphasis on. And so uh, with cyber, with critical infrastructure, and uh, the activities that we do in the exercise program. Well, I'm glad to see that the department is taking uh, these challenges seriously. I, I look forward to continuing to work uh, with the department and this committee uh, to address the threats uh, facing our national security and the immediate risk uh, that, that faces uh, us uh, with the situation in Haiti. Uh, Assistant Secretary Zimmerman, uh, I agree with you that the challenge of natural and man-made hazards do not wait for us to resolve other ongoing national security crises. We must act now. How is the Department of Defense taking into account climate resiliency in its everyday decision-making process? Uh, Congressman, thank you so much. Uh, climate resilience has become an important part of uh, how we do business, not just in terms of looking directly at climate change as, as an issue, but really in terms of how we integrate across the range of activities that the department does in order to ensure that we have the operational advantage wherever we need it. Uh, so an example would be uh, in the Pacific, uh, the Ronald Reagan Missile Defense Test Range uh, sits on a site that I think is only six feet above sea level and uh, with the challenge of sea level rise, uh, we have to make sure that we're taking the steps to enforce that infrastructure so that we can continue to do what we need to do from a security perspective. Likewise, I think another example I would give would be in the Arctic, where uh, climate change happening uh, at a rate uh, three times that that we see in certain other places has opened up new approaches and has made it really an arena for strategic competition. So we see the military of the Arctic by Russia, China considering itself as a near-Arctic nation, and that creates a lot of dilemmas that I think we have to ensure that we're on top of. And then the last I will say is that um, when we see extreme weather here in the homeland, uh, that is something that we need to respond to in support of uh, our uh, civil authorities when they ask for it and when we can do so without affecting readiness. But that, uh, that increasing challenge, the number of incidents that we are now responding to, I think also creates um, the possibility that we'll be uh, stretched more thinly. I, I would add, uh, obviously, the Western Hemisphere, the devastating storms, droughts, and flooding which have inflamed conflicts and contributed to instability and mass migration. Uh, so how can the department then, uh, Assistant Secretary Zimmerman, uh, better partner with these vulnerable countries so that existing risks are not exacerbated by these extreme weather events? Um, one of the ways that we're looking to do that is through our security cooperation efforts. So uh, we have uh, recently initiated a program called DORIC, which works with partners right now in uh, the Western Hemisphere in Africa uh, to try to gear some of our, we have uh, I think $10 million uh, this year and we'll be renewing that. 
uh, which works with our partners to build partner capacity in areas that affect uh, climate change or affected by climate change. Great. Gentleman's time has expired. Chair, and I recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Jimenez.